Ungemtrat. Hello everyone, you are listening to You've Got Five Options show with Marta and Anna. Join us while we are solving yet another life challenge. And if you decide to share your problem with us, yours can be next. Hello everyone, this is Marta. And this is Anna. We also have a technician. Do you want to say hello? Oh my God, he's doing it. He's doing it. Hello from the technician. <laughs> hello. Hello from the other side. Yes, that was our own Adele. Yeah, so Bronco is a little bit more shy than uh, Lesse. And yeah. uh, he doesn't really want to talk to us, but uh, we are allowed to ask him yes and no questions where he moves his head uh, in the right direction. I actually hope that you use the same language when it comes to the same body language as in Poland, not like in Bulgaria, because yeah. in Bulgaria they have it the opposite. So that would be quite funny. Uh, uh, that would be very funny <laughs> to be honest, because we have asked Bronco some questions in our first episode of, episode of this challenge solution. Am I saying? Yeah, I think it's correct. My English is uh, sometimes, sometimes my English has its own way that they cannot control. Yeah, and this is what we love about you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Because we can put some cool uh, sound effects. Yes. Thanks to it. Super English. Yeah, I know, I know. But yeah, we hope that we got it right. Otherwise, we translated all your answers, Bronco, in a wrong way. But uh, as I mentioned, this is the second part of the solution to Michelle's challenge. Yeah, Michelle has a challenge. She would like to be friends with her ex. Yes. And uh, we have prepared five ground rules for a friendship between exes. And we have discussed the first two rules in our previous episode. So, guys, we encourage you to go to our website, thefiveoptions.com, where you can choose and either find our YouTube channel and listen to the previous episode in the YouTube channel. Or if you are more of a podcaster, you can find the link to our podcasts or you can just simply search on your phone or other mobile device uh, in a podcast app for You've Got Five Options. And there we are. Yes, we are. And we are waiting to be listened to. <laughs> <laughs> like not, not, uh, not literally. We are not <laughs> trapped in the podcast app. Just just saying, but we are mentally welcoming you all to, to find our podcast. We we've heard that it's uh, it's super cool. Well, we, we like to think like this, but funny and inspirational at the same time. Oh, yeah, we're so smart and funny. It's hard to achieve. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. we hope that you will reach out for the previous episode. And we will just start this episode uh, with Anna reading the challenge. Yes. So this is a little refreshment. So Michelle uh, has a challenge that goes like this. I have been with my boyfriend for five years. We were really close friends before we started being together. And one of the main reasons for me to prolong the relationship was that I didn't want to lose my best friend. Now we are done as a couple. It was a common decision and we would both like to remain to be friends. But I am not sure if that is even possible. We share the same awesome group of friends and us not being able to continue the friendship would mean that the group has to split in one way or another. We'd like to give it a shot. What would be the best way to handle the, situa the situation? Yes, yeah, so we started uh, solving that uh, challenge last time by talking about honesty. We believe that you can only remain being friends uh, with an ex if you are both honest uh, towards each other, especially when it comes to feelings. And we also talked about giving each other time and space so that we can read that you were together for five years. So this time and space for any wounds to heal, for any uh, remainings of the romantic feelings to disappear, that would definitely be a good idea. But today we are starting with the rule number three. 
each of you takes a full responsibility for how you feel. Yeah, I actually have a one more uh, observation. Uh, which is based purely on interpretation. But guys, when I read it again, because I read it already twice out loud, there is something interesting here. And one of the main reasons for me to prolong the relationship was that I didn't want to lose my best friend. So this is actually quite interesting detail because then Michelle writes, now we are done as a couple, it was a common decision, uh, but she says that from her side, she was prolonging the relationship more than it was probably, you know, suitable because she didn't want it to lose her best friend. So um, that's, that's an interesting thing because I wonder how it was on his side. We don't have that information, but uh, yeah, it, it, it gives me, you know, a foot to think. Maybe, maybe it wasn't that clear common decision. But I'm speculating. So, Michelle, if you would like to shout out and, you know, go into details, we would love to to hear what you have to say. But maybe sometimes, you know, we we have a feeling that something was a common decision, but maybe not necessarily. And I would like to say that that's why the options we had, the rules we had in the first episode would be very important here. Yeah, yeah, totally. Uh, that's why we started with honesty, because... Mm -hmm. As you mentioned, you may feel a certain way. You may have gone through the process of breakup for the last two years or whatever, but it may not be exactly the same for your ex-boyfriend. So that's why the honesty and also giving each other time and space were the first two rules, because that was exactly what I read. That stood up for me very clearly uh, when, uh, when I read this uh, challenge the first time, that uh, it's very important to take care of both sides, because you may assume he's over uh, you, it may not necessarily be th that way. He may have agreed that it's a best uh, possible idea to break up because he can see that you don't feel the way you should be feeling. It doesn't necessarily mean that he doesn't feel this way. That's why, yeah, the first two rules were as they were. Yeah, and some people just put on a good face or they they try to be understanding. And, you know, if they see that a person doesn't want to be with you, they don't necessarily will cry. They will not make a big drama. They will say, OK, I understand. I, I let you go. But it doesn't mean that the feelings are gone, even if it's allegedly a common decision. Anyway, the good part of what we can also read from the challenge is and we would both like to remain being friends. So that's what gives us a good uh, ground for building that friendship, that you both agree that that's what you would like to do. So rule number three, each of you takes full responsibility for how you feel. And this rule is very important for me uh, when thinking about uh, friendships because You've been together for five years. So in some way, you have been helping each other with the way you feel. You've been a support to each other. And of course, as close friends, you may also be support to each other. But now something changes because you were a couple. You were in that close bond. And uh, now you do have to change that bond. And it will only be possible for you to uh, be friends if you acknowledge that from now and on, each one of you takes full responsibility for how you feel. So, for example, if there is some jealousy coming up, let's say one of you starts dating someone else, it can only work if this person takes full responsibility for their own feelings. Because jealousy or a like not so high and nicely felt feelings, we can feel them not because we are still in love, but we can also feel them because of, for example, lack of uh, self-confidence, uh, self-worth or something like that. It's not always a sign that we are still deeply in love. It could be our internal issues that, totally, are, totally. Yeah, that are, you know, coming up here. So that's why it's so extremely important that you, each of you, takes full responsibility for how each one of you feel so you don't start blaming the other so exactly. you don't start expecting stuff from the other person that's why we are also mentioning in the first uh, episode the maturity part 
that that kind of friendship between exes, that kind of friendship where you meet uh, regularly, because if it's a friendship where you meet twice or three times a year, totally uh, possible without uh, yeah, a bigger amount of investment. But if it's a close friendship where you meet with your friends every weekend, for example, or even go for trips together and so on, it's really necessary that each one of you takes full responsibility for how you feel. Yeah, and there may be a lot of feelings to deal with. Yeah, I, I totally agree. And you made a very, very good point, Marta, because especially when you are with someone for five years, that person is an integral part of your life. And I think many times it's not even about feelings, but also the feelings, romantic feelings, but also the feeling of possession on some of some kind, you know, and it, it, it is life changing event when you end a relationship that was so long. So yeah, a simple feeling of possession. I actually was uh, looking at uh, at this uh, factor when we were preparing to our live show, you know, about marriage and, you know, possession, possessing someone is is a big part of, of actually uh, relationships. I'm not saying it's a right thing. I, I would say it's a it's a thing that we would have to work on not to feel possessive towards people. But a simple thing like that was my boyfriend and uh, and now it's not and maybe I don't want him back. But why he has another girlfriend or even stupid things like there might be some things that you had problems with and you see his uh, new interest and he does that things for her. I heard that uh, accusation many times, like for instance, uh, when he was with me for five years, he was never buying me flowers and he buys her flowers. Or for instance, he never wanted to propose and he just proposed to a girl after six months, you know, and it's a, uh, it's that kind of a feeling of like, you know, I'm hurt here. I don't want to be with you. I don't love you, but I feel like, you know, I was not treated properly and it's, you know, we behave different with different people in different relationships, but that kind of feelings can also easily resurface and they don't mean that you are in love with a person. It might be that you still have some healing to deal with. Yeah, totally. So that's why this rule is extremely important because feelings are natural things and it's not like you can tell yourself, don't feel that. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not a good idea uh, to tell yourself not to feel something. When you have the feelings, the only thing that you need to do is to accept and fully embrace that it's your own feelings. They actually have not that much to do with the other person. They are your internal journey. They are the things you are going through. And if you want to be friends with your ex, you have to take 100% responsibility for all those fear feelings, may it be jealousy, may it be possession, may it be some kind of anger, disappointment. There could be many different things that you may be feeling after a breakup. Yeah, I totally agree. And uh, but I, I think it's a, it's a tough one to take the full responsibility for how we feel, right? I think it's a tough one but it's something that we should definitely strive for yeah. because it doesn't serve us in any way. Totally. In any way to blame someone else for our feelings. Or, or to blame, for instance, for the past, which is like, yeah. And that's why some kind of level of maturity, it is necessary here if you want to be friends with an ex without a lot of drama. Because that's, that's the reality. As soon as you go into any kind of a blame game, the drama just comes up. I totally agree. I was just reflecting on, on something. I, I remembered one of the episodes from How I Met Your Mother. When uh, for anyone who is watching, you will know what I talk about. For the ones that don't, I will just tell you that there were two friends who were in a relationship and they broke up. It was Barney and Robin. And then Barney, who was always a womanizer and dating a lot of women, he went on a date. He was dating another woman and he really wanted to, you know, get her to bed. But she was very difficult in that. So he was planning this extremely elaborated magical dates. And his ex-girlfriend was very, very hurt because he never done that to her. So that kind of thing, you know, and I'm thinking that actually it even happened to me sometimes, you know, when I when I when I look back at some situations like why that person wasn't like this with me as he is with, let's say, a new partner or something, you know, and that's uh, I think that what you have said, you have to realize that first of all, time passes, 
people change, situations change. You know, even your, your boyfriend is not the same person as he was five years ago or something, you know? So really interesting topic made me reflect. Yeah, it could be that you were that necessarily necessary part of learning for mm -hmm. him. Maybe he has understood that he was a bad boyfriend with you. And now he has le has learned, wow, I lost a really good girlfriend because of being an asshole. <laughs> Sorry for my language. Or not doing exactly. So things. now I will do better. Yeah. And, and you feel uh, affected because why he wasn't that uh, with me? When in reality, maybe you were the inspiration or a lesson that taught him to be a better man for someone else. Yeah, and it's difficult to accept <laughs> Very. when you are uh, that kind of a person. But still, if you manage to take responsibility, embrace your own feelings with all their colors and fa flavors, you're going to be fine and you are going to be able to have that friendship. With and them. I think that the last thing here is if you are unable at the beginning, because it's a difficult art to take full responsibility for your own feelings. If you are unable to cope with it, if you feel those feelings of jealousy, possessiveness, some kind of anger or resentment or unfairness, I think it's good to park the idea of friendship for a bit, because I, I don't think it's healthy to, you know, I own my own feelings yet I feel them and I'm getting really upset, then I think the idea that, that I, then you have to come back to rule number two, in my opinion. Or you, if it's something that you feel one afternoon, but it's gone the other day, it's uh, totally fine. Uh, a good idea could be talk to your friend, just not that friend. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> not, not the ex. Yeah. That can end up in a bloodbath. Yeah, in a bad blood. <laughs> okay. Or in a bad blood. Uh, so uh, rule number four is set the clear boundaries for your friendship. Mm -hmm. So this is where more of this kind of practical part comes in. That actually also ties to rule number one, meaning honesty. So basically the idea here is that you both sit together and you discuss what is it that you expect from that relationship? How, I mean, that friendship, which is also a type of a relationship. Yes. But how do you expect it to, you know, to look like? So this is extremely important rule because this is where you manage the expectations. Because if one of you expects that you will be calling each other daily and you will be like really the best buddies uh, and the other one is like, ho, ho, we can be friends. Uh, <laughs> I thought ho, ho, like Santa Claus, like ho, ho. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. That's, I mean, we are with a beautiful summer weather here. But so. you know, I miss Christmas. Like uh, la last week I like missed Christmas. No Christmas. Christmas <laughs> comes with a really, really bad weather in Denmark. I Did you summer. just pull a cross <laughs> of Jesus Christ on me with your fingers? <laughs> I may have or may have not done that. I am not an antichrist because I want Christmas. Actually, it should be quite the opposite, my dear. Okay, I just need this weather to stay for a while. I just realized I was depressed entire winter with that crap yeah, that guys. lasted from 2016 <laughs> because there was no summer in 2017. So yeah, uh, yeah. But anyway, rules. So basically, the rules could be about agreeing how and how often you're going to communicate. That could be one set of rules and what's allowed and what's not like, is it allowed to call each other every night and talk for one hour about your day and about your problems and uh, funny stuff or isn't it allowed? Yeah. And uh, do you only meet with that group of friends and that's the extent of your friendship? Or do you also have like an individual uh, relation between the two of you? And it's really important that both of you accept each other boundaries. So if one of you would like to keep that very close friendship, but the other one needs much more space, it's very important to uh, accept that boundary from uh, from the other side and don't expect that this friendship may be a close one like it used to be. I think the only tricky part here with this option when I think about it and I try to relate it to my other friendships is that, you know, it, it might sound for people a little bit weird, like you have to like sit down and <laughs> like almost write down the rules, like how often do we call each other? How it's almost like a, you know, some kind of a, um, a divorce paper, you know, or something. But then when I think about it, it doesn't maybe necessarily has to be, you know, that 
strict in structure, but it's a very good idea because this is not a typical friendship. This is not a, a, a normal, I, I don't need to talk with Marta like every half a year. Okay, let's review the rules of our friendship. Okay, Marta, you can call me only on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. It's not necessary, but this is a very specific situation. So I think this is this is actually necessary. But uh, when you hear it, don't, don't feel like, oh my God, what am I supposed to write a contract? It's more about a discussion and some ground rules. I totally, uh, I, I think that it would be better to understand it like this. Yeah, of course. And it's really very much about simply managing the expectations. It's not mm -hmm. about whether we call each other every Tuesday. It's more about does one of you want to call each other every day and the other one wants to be only seeing each other when the friends meet. So mm -hmm. it's uh, you take it to the level of detail <laughs> yeah. that is uh, right for you. But it's important to discuss it. What are the boundaries for your friendship? Are you best buddies or are you just in the same group of friends and you rarely communicate? And also what about you know, talking about each other with the friends that you share commonly with. If, if one of you sometimes needs to, I don't know, discuss some of those nasty feelings of jealousy or possession, uh, do you talk within that common group of friends? And is that necessarily a good idea? Or maybe you have maybe a better idea would be to have a discussion with someone from outside the group. Or send a challenge to you've got five options. That's an awesome idea. I know. I know. I, I think it's the second best idea I have had after the lie detector. Main joke. Yeah, high five to me. No one else is impressed, but you know. But yeah, exactly. Send send that to us or just find someone outside of the group. But I think, you know, the, the, the last thing I wanted to add here, I think you have to be prepared for this conversation because I think it might be difficult if you come with your idea and then you sit in front of your, let's say, ex-boyfriend and you are best friends and you feel inside of you that I don't really want that very uh, daily contact, maybe only within the group of friends. And he says, yeah, is it okay if I, I will call you every day? Is that, you know, uh, allowed? And then you might chicken. You might be like, you may not want to hurt his feelings because even in friendship, it's difficult to say, listen, I need more space because you always are afraid to hurt other person's feelings. So, you know, be mentally prepared that the expectations of your ex might be different and uh, train yourself to be gracefully firm on your boundaries because people sometimes might fall into this trap yeah it's fine and then what the hell did i agree to it's like just for a sake of not making him feel sad i agreed for something that is uncomfortable for me so this is actually really important in my opinion yeah and this is where you also remind yourself that rule number one was honesty and when we talk about honesty it is you know also an important thing to d differentiate between being over honest and overflowing with all your emotions and things that you should also take in rule number three, take responsibility for how you feel. But be honest in a sense of this like healthy honesty. If your ex-boyfriend comes with a suggestion that truly doesn't, you know, uh, fall well on your stomach, so to speak, be honest and say, look, uh, I understand that you would like to have a, a closer contact, but I'm not ready for it or I don't feel that it would serve us as friends. So it's it is about this, uh, you know, uh, being empathic, but also uh, being honest at the same time. Totally agree. And now we will move to the last rule, which is set the rules for dating other people. Boo, scary. Yeah, that I think is one of the most difficult scary. ones when uh, when talking about ex uh, relationships, mm -hmm. because jealousy. Yeah, remember what we talked in rule number three, jealousy, possessiveness. And I'm sorry that we are so dark and dramatic, but we have to face the possibility of those feelings. Yeah, and it just brings up the worst in us. Yeah, it does. So guys, it's important to agree how it goes about dating other people. Because of course you separate, you're not a relationship anymore. So of course it's assumed that sooner or later each one of you will start dating someone. Maybe someone already started to date someone. That is something. And of course you cannot 
or we wouldn't recommend or mean here that you set the rules that we can't date anyone for the next half a year so that we give each other time and space. That's not what we mean here. It's more about in relation to your group of friends. But it's it's a tricky one as well because um, I remember I, I talked recently with, uh, with my uh, friend and, uh, you know, we discussed the mourning period. So after the relationship is over, if your ex-boyfriend or ex-girlfriend just moves on to someone else straight away, first of all, you start to suspect that, you know, there was something between them before. But even if it's just by chance, you know, you separated and then she or he met someone a week after. Many people consider this insensitive because they think that so how much this relation really meant to you if you are able to switch like this? You know, and, and many people require from the other one to also have this mourning period, you know, that we have to like reflect and be sad and, and so on. However, um, yeah, it comes back to rule number three. You have to own your own emotions and your own feelings and understand that some sometimes things happen like this and this is not directed against you. And actually some people cope with uh, breakups in this way that they straight away replace the former partner with a new one. And it actually doesn't mean that they don't really hurt or they don't really care, but this is how they cope. They need to just have a replacement straight away. Yeah, but it is totally valid to talk about it. Yes. So if you, for example, feel that that way, that, you know, uh, I want to break up with you, but if I see that if you start dating someone, I will really feel shitty about it, then it's a very valid point to, it may be a valid point to talk about it. I don't know, you know, it's a personal thing. But what I meant here the most was in relation to your common group of friends, because that's where you guys meet together. And this is where it's really, really valid to discuss about. So if one of you starts dating someone else, when is it okay to bring that person to the group of friends? That's much of a more tricky situation. Are you gonna, if you're a person that uh, now starts dating someone else every month, are you gonna bring that person every time to all the, uh, you know, friendly meetings? Uh, and I want to show you my Pokemon collection from the last six months. Yeah, that's not really. Yeah. Well, it depends on people, I, I guess. But you are absolutely right. Because on one hand, I see this like you try to keep that person and maybe you meet individually with your friends outside of the ex. And then the ex might say, are you hiding? Or then if you will do it too fast, the ex will say you are insensitive. So it's I think it's very individual. Yeah, it's very, very individual. So you just talk about it. What is it that are the rules for you guys? So, you know, just to manage expectations, because I think we have uh, been repeating that over and over in all our radio shows, uh, podcasts and so on. The expectations, they are killers, you know, they are silent killers of any relations. Uh, that's um, a very wise quote by Marta. Yeah, I think that's actually like a. I don't remember where did that quote come from, but I know that we have it in something like Darth Vader as a sound effect. They are the secret silent killers of all the relations. But anyway, guys, we have given you five rules. And we believe that if you are able to stick to those rules, if you are able to be honest, give time and space when necessary, take care of your own feelings, you know, like really embrace your own feelings and set the boundaries for your friendship and discuss some of the rules on dating other people. We do believe that it is possible to have a friendship with an ex. Yes, and I also believe that a lie detector might help. And if any other rule you believe is important for you, totally bring it up into uh, onto the table and discuss it with your ex and we hope that you will have a beautiful friendship and that your awesome group of friends will not have to dissolve because of your breakup i totally agree thank you michelle for sharing your challenge with us and thank you all the listeners bye 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 guys you are listening to you've got five options show where we solve your life challenges. Remember that you can visit our website, the5options.com, where you can submit your challenge or find our previous challenges. That's, That's 
all, folks.